Hello everyone. I'm at the Aliso and Wood Canyon Wilderness Park. This park's located roughly halfway between LA and San Diego, real close to the coast. And I'm gonna take on the challenge of hiking up this monumental peak behind me, Molten Peak. That's as high as we get here in Orange County. But as I dare these hikes up this height, we're gonna be walking through four different geological formations. We're gonna stop at each of those, peer into the layers, and see if we can extract a story as to what was going on here in the distant past. Let's go. Oh, watch out for that poison oak. Leaves of three, let it be. Now the reason we can see all these formations is there's a creek that runs through here and it's been slowly eroding out a canyon. So these four formations actually lay one on top of the other. So as we hike starting at the bottom of the canyon and work our way out to Molten Peak at the top, we're gonna walk through each of those layers. So for our first geological formation on our hike, we have the Topanga Sandstone. So before we get into the details of this formation, I wanna pause and give you some encouragement. A lot of these formations, if not all, have names, like this one's called the Topanga Formation. And although knowing the names of formations is good, it doesn't really tell you anything about the, the rock or the formation. So when you see different things out there in the field like this, ask yourself, like, how did this get here? How did this form? That gives you the story, and that's what's most rewarding. So how does sandstone form? Where would you get a collection of sand grains all relatively the same size? Well, think about the Sahara Desert or the Kelso Dunes, right? It could come from that. In this case, it actually came from a coastal region. Think of a beach. And if you walked from the beach and you went out uh, into the ocean, you'd have miles and miles of sand. That's where all this sand came from. Okay, sand that's basically coming from the land and drifting into the oceans. But take a closer look. There's more of a story here. Look at this section right here. So these are finer grain sands. These are bigger grain sands. And these are finer grain sands. Is there a story to tell here? Oh, you betcha. If you think about the beach, the sand comes from rivers. Rivers carry the sand and they're deposited. So as this sand right here is being deposited, it's pretty normal season. All the sand grains are about the same size. Everything's fine and normal. But then you get bigger sand grains, almost a gravel here. Well, that tells you that the rivers must have pumped up, right? It must have been raining heavily that the rivers were dumping a lot more and could carry these bigger grains further. So this tells you of, you had a big wet season where there's a bunch of deposits of this and then it kind of dried out again. And then you have fine grain deposits again. And as you can see, it repeats over and over and over. So just by looking at a few clues in the formation, that it's all sand and then you have those little gravel layers in there, that tells you that this area was once covered by an ocean. Great, let's go find our next formation. Well, I've hiked about two thirds of the way up the peak out of the canyon and the entire time, it's been the same Topanga sandstone. It's everywhere. I've got Topanga sandstone. I got blocks of Topanga sandstone and I've got Topanga sand. That's all I got. But just up here on the trail, something interesting happens. Topanga sandstone, Topanga sandstone, Topanga sand. Whoa, what do we have here? That's not Topanga sandstone. What's going on? So right here in the trail, we get to our second formation. This is the first formation. This is the Topanga sandstone. But right here, the rock completely changes. You see how it's all sandstone here? And then it changes to this. What is this? This is the San Onofre Breccia. I did a post on this down at the beach at Dana Point. That's over five miles from here, but the same formation is here. But what's the significance of the San Onofre Breccia being on top of the Topanga sandstone? What is the story there? So let's break it down. You have the Topanga sandstone, which was basically an ocean, right? A beach to an ocean like a thousand feet deep. That's where all the sand got deposited. And remember the story of the San Onofre Breccia? It was an underwater landslide from islands that were off the coast of California. So it makes sense that an underwater landslide would be on top of the sand that was at the bottom of the ocean. And that's why we find this landslide material on top of the Topanga Sandstone. So let that sink in. This point right here, you have the Topanga Sandstone, and then boom, you have the San Onofre Breccia. It's at this point in time 
that you go from just ocean floor, sandy ocean floor, and then this landslide of material comes down. Now that's a story. Onward and upward to the top. Would you take a look at this? I've hiked another 200 feet out of the canyon and I'm stumbling across the third geologic formation in our hike today. Well, what is it? Well, it's not the Topanga sandstone. That's where we started at the bottom. And then above that with the San Onofre breccia, this isn't either of those. What is it? And is there a story behind it? This, my friends, is the Monterey Formation. But never mind the name. What is it? It's limestone. Well, that's interesting. What's the story behind limestone? How do you get limestone? If you have a formation of limestone, that tells you that at one point in the past, this area was covered by a shallow, warm sea, real similar to the Caribbean. Limestone's being created there as we speak. Limestone is formed from microscopic shells in the ocean that precipitate out of it, and they get put layer upon layer upon layer, and then they get cemented together to create a stone, limestone. Well, how do you know that? I mean, how do you know that? Is there any more like evidence to prove that this was a shallow, warm sea at some time? Yeah, I got something I wanna show you. Check this out. Trace fossils of clams within the formation. More evidence a shallow warm sea being in this area. So what's next in the story? All right, guys, we made it to our fourth and final formation of our hike. That is the Niguel Formation. But never mind the name. What's the story? Well, do you see those mountains in the background? Those are the Santa Ana Mountains with its peak Saddleback Mountain, Santiago Peak there. San Andreas Fault Region lies behind those mountains. So this is an uplift story. Uplift and erosion of the Santa Ana Mountains bringing all this sand to the oceans. On top of that, limestone, the Monterey Formation. More evidence that the Niguel Formation formed under an ocean is behind me. Can you see it? Well, no, you're looking back there. I was like, it's a bunch of houses back there. There's no evidence back there. But when they were building these communities and shopping centers, the contractors were grading and digging into that Niguel Formation. And guess what they found? Huge whale bones, complete skeletons, big shark teeth, small shark teeth, fish bones, more evidence that this area was covered in an ocean. Okay, so let's review the story one more time. Topeka sandstone, ocean, deposit all the sand, submarine landslides, San Onofre breccia, shallow warm sea, Monterey formation, San Andreas fault region causing uplift and the deposit of more sand on top of everything for the Niguel formation. So the point that I'd like to make, it's not about memorizing the names of formations. That's like memorizing the titles of books, right? Without reading them. To Kill a Mockingbird. Does that tell you anything about the plot of the story? Not really. So knowing the names is good for identification purposes, but dig down deeper, try to find the story. That's where the satisfaction comes in. Congratulations. We made it to the top of Molten Peak. Nice, beautiful, clear day. You can see Catalina there in the distance. When you make it to the destination of your hike, it's always good time to just take stock, soak in the view, give yourself a celebratory drink.